Beloved friends, my name is Mehran Irfani, and I, along with the rest of the executive members of the Poway Interfaith team, welcome you all to this year's Thanksgiving Day celebration via Zoom. Thanksgiving has always been a special time of year for me. As a member of the Baha'i community, it resonates so much both in material and spiritual meaning. As a Baha'i, I know that we are all from God and to whom we shall all return. I know that through love and fellowship, one can realize the meaning of life and the potential of human existence. Abdu'l Baha, the center of the covenant and the sole interpreter of Baha'u'llah's teachings, asks us to be true and perfect representation of the spirit of love in the world. He says, Ask ye all, each and every one of you, to follow the well light of truth in the holy teachings, and God will strengthen you by his Holy Spirit so that you will be enabled to overcome the difficulties and will destroy the prejudices which cause separation and hatred amongst the people. Let your hearts be filled with great love of God. Let it be felt by all. For every man is a servant of God, and all are entitled to a share of divine bounty. As a member of Point, I feel exhilarated by the camaraderie and fellowship and love and acceptance of all faiths and religions because we all know that our purpose is one. Each have our own way in, but the focus and the aim is one. So it is that we are promised again by Abdu'l Baha that if ye are faithful to your great work, following the holy 
Son of Truth without swerving. Then will the blessed day of universal brotherhood dawn at this beautiful earth. In Chronicles 16.34 it is written, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His love endures forever. Then again it is written, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as a member of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. So we are reminded that we are all members of one body, one life, one being. In Quran Surah 2172, we read, O ye who believe, eat of the good things we have provided for you, and give thanks to Allah if it is Him that you serve. And in Buddhist writings we read, let us rise up and be thankful for if we didn't learn a lot today, at least we learn a little. And if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't die. So let us all be thankful. So let us be thankful. We are all together and this year we need to help the world more than ever. Calamity and strife are all abound. We should rally to the cause of unity and stop the flame of enmity and estrangement throughout the world. Let us all sound with love in our hearts and be the ensigns of camaraderie and fellowship working towards unifying hearts of the world. Happy Thanksgiving. Good evening. I am Reverend Sherry Mateer, co-founder and executive director of Interfaith Worker Justice, San Diego County, also known as IWJSD. IWJSD is an affiliate of the national organization Interfaith Worker Justice. We bring together faith leaders and their faith communities with labor leaders and workers because there's a direct correlation between the tenets of faith and worker justice. We work with people of many faith traditions, including Sikhism, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, Unitarian Universalist, Protestant, Catholic, and other expressions of Christianity to promote fair wages for all people, safe working conditions, and a voice on the job, as all workers deserve dignity and respect. This work began with immigrants to what we now know as the United States of America, and though while unfortunately slow to do so, now fully includes First Nation peoples. IWJSD marches and stands in solidarity with all workers, including BIPOC workers, as they demand safe, working conditions and living wage. Every worker deserves to be paid fairly and fully for their labor. Interfaith Worker Justice was the first national organization to identify and tackle the problem of wage theft in America. Interfaith Worker Justice San Diego and all religions condemn wage theft in all, condemn theft in all forms. A living wage is a wage that a working people must earn to adequately provide for their basic necessities without assistance for public benefits program. Interfaith Worker Justice works to enforce living wage ordinances. The Fight for 15, which started over a decade ago to increase the natural minimum wage to $15 an hour, seemed like a pipe dream at the time. Thanks to fast food workers and other low wage workers and IWJ, $15 an hour is now the minimum of starting wage. This is the product of the efforts of labor movements in the United States and faith people. And we continue to work towards ensuring, ensuring that all people receive a fair return for their work. We work to save lives by holding work employers accountable for safe working conditions and providing training. IWJSD holds an annual memorial service for workers who have died on the job during Worker Memorial Week, recognized the last week of April each year. We are also proactive in workplace safety by providing OSHA and other workplace safety training, including prevention of contagious disease. Paid sick leave is a paramount to workplace safety. 
one in three working people must choose between staying home sick and earning their salary. IWJSD is part of a broad coalition demanding a faithful budget from Congress and our local municipalities and the County of San Diego. The bigotry that still exists in America today has a direct impact on specific communities of working people, the immigrant community, African-American community, and the First Nations community. One of the driving forces in immigration in the United States is the search for good jobs. Fighting for the rights of immigrant workers has long been part of the faith labor union and faith communities. All worker justice issues are seeded in or fueled by structural racism that must be addressed before we can win justice and dignity for all. This is the reason the labor movement and IWJSD has a long history of committing systemic racism and unjust immigration policy. Civil rights movement and labor movement have been intertwined from the beginning. Civil rights leaders have always been labor leaders too. Union members marched in Washington in 1963 and in countless cities throughout the country. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated while in Memphis to aid striking sanitation workers. On behalf of Interfaith Worker Justice of San Diego, our labor and faith partners, we give great, deep gratitude to those who came before and paved the roads towards worker justice because all religions believe in justice. Namaste, Hariyo. As I think of the topic that is being given to us this Thanksgiving, our gratitude to those who came before us, those whose shoulders we lean on, the first that comes to my mind, my own parents, who gave me this body, and all the teachings from them, then the ancestors from whom all the traditions and customs have come to us. And most importantly, the sages and saints who persevere and preserve the sacred knowledge through the years to pass on to the next generation. Here I'm standing in front of this lineage of gurus, starting with the Lord himself, the perennial knowledge flowing through these different masters and coming to me through my own master here, Swami Chinmayananda. Gratitude is acknowledging what we have been blessed with. And so many things in the world we are blessed with to even live the worldly life. But to a spiritual student, it is the sustenance of the spiritual life that is most important. The Hindu scriptures were brought to America by the great Swami Vivekananda more than 100 years ago. And we know his speech at the Parliament of World Religions is very well known and continuing the legacy with our own guru who has been spreading this knowledge throughout the world while he was in the body and even after his light is spreading around the world. Today the problems we see in the environment are the result of ingratitude and greed. Yet, there were many who strive to preserve this even to the extent it is and keep this as the same word. To them, we offer our salutations. To conclude, we would present some of our students from sixth grade who will present a song that glorifies the five great elements without which we cannot live and that offer valuable lessons to us. Vishwam Gurur Mama, this whole universe is my teacher. As my guru puts it, this universe is the university of life. 
when we can be grateful for everything we have, we would achieve the goal of self-realization. My dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I would like to start by greeting you all with the greeting of Islam, the greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum and peace be with you all. My name is Taha Hassan and I'm the Imam and Director of the Islamic Center of San Diego. And uh, today I would like to share with you some words and thoughts on the concept of thankfulness. And tonight we are going to express our thankfulness to very specific people in our history and at our current moment. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Man la yashkurin nas, la yashkurillah, which means whoever doesn't thank people doesn't thank God. So in the light of this hadith, this saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I would like to express my thankfulness and gratitude to number one, my ancestors who carried the message of Islam throughout generations to reach us now at this current moment as pure as it was revealed at the first time more than 14 centuries ago. Thank you so much. Also, I would like to express my thankfulness and gratitude to early generations of Muslims who migrated to this land, whether forcibly or voluntarily. And we know that more than one third of the enslaved people who were uh, brought to this land as slaves were Muslims. And those worked and struggled to establish and preserve the community that we are part of at this moment. Thank you all. I would like to express my thankfulness and gratitude to the real owners of the land we live in, the Kumaye Nation. Thank you for accepting us, for allowing us to live in this land. And we promise you that we will do all what we can to honor our commitment to preserving the sacredness of your land. 
Thank you again. I would like also to express my thankfulness and gratitude to the great leaders and heroes of our communities. Those who worked very hard and still working, who struggled day in and day out to establish and maintain justice in our nation. Thank you again. My dear brothers and sisters, thankfulness is not a word. Thankfulness is not a feeling, but thankfulness is an action. So are we ready to be really thankful and grateful for all the generations of people who established these communities that we are living in at this moment? I hope so. May God bless you all and thank you. Good evening, Reverend Greg Davis here from Community Church of Poway, and I've been joined by Myra and Carl Erickson. It is such a blessing to be a part of this service again this year, this Thanksgiving service, this Thanksgiving season. You know, as I think about Thanksgiving itself, I remember that Thanksgiving, well, it's a national holiday. It is not necessarily a religious one. And then I think about the history of what we see as Thanksgiving, and I realize that the beginnings of our country, the discovery of this new land, was not brought about with a lot of loving actions, right? But I also believe that if we've learned anything in the last 18 months, is that God's Spirit is everywhere, and God's Spirit is able to give us the power to reconcile our past to accept our past, but more importantly, to be empowered for a future where love and spirit is at the center of all we do. God's spirit is not just in a sanctuary. God's spirit is not just in a mosque. God's spirit is not just in a temple. But God's spirit is everywhere. And I believe as a people, if we access God's spirit and God's power, that we will be able to have a lasting effect on our world, on our state, on our communities. Because you see, God's Spirit, God's everlasting Spirit, is everywhere we go. In, in this very room, there's quite enough love for one like me and in this very room there's quite enough joy for one like me and there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to chase away Thank you. 
Happy Thanksgiving. My name is Rabbi Sammy Side from Ner Tamid Synagogue. It is a pleasure to share in the blessings, to share on the theme of uh, Points Interfaith Thanksgiving service this year, giving gratitude for those who have come before us. I wish to share that the Talmud, a uh, important Jewish text that came out in the early medieval period, cites that if our ancestors were like giants, we are but tiny little people. However, we can stand on the shoulders of our ancestors to see even farther than they may have. That's to say that while our tradition has developed wonderful, beautiful things over time, we always have this opportunity to shift it and help it evolve uh, to see to what present day society's needs are. And while I don't think Judaism necessarily has a monopoly on this, I think all of our shared religious and faith traditions do have this building upon previous practice and tradition that have come before us. I think that on the question of what Judaism can contribute to the United States of America, I believe that this attitude is there, right? This idea that we can build on what's come before us, right? that we should seek out how to build a better society, how to continue to move forward. And I think that this comes from numerous statements made throughout Jewish text, a couple of which in Leviticus 19.16, we learn, Lo ta'amod al dam re'echa, which is translated classically as, don't stand idly by the blood of your neighbor. It is imperative that we act, that we try to alleviate suffering and pain in our world, that we lend a helping hand to those around us. We're told in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 20, tzedek, tzedek tirdof, justice, justice you shall pursue. We're told to seek after justice. We're told to help our neighbors. And this is a, a, an essence that I think Judaism can help try to contribute to American society. Right, to help us progress forward by lending a hand to each other, by seeking out justice and righteousness wherever we can find it. And I think also that one of the things that Judaism offers, as I mentioned before, this ability to stand on the shoulders of our ancestors, those who have come before us. Right, We're taught in Deuteronomy 17.9 that when we're seeking out how to solve a potentially challenging case, that we're supposed to find hashofet asher yihyeh b'yamim the judge that is the judge in your days, right? And what that's to say is, is that we have people that we can turn to. We have leadership, God willing, that we can turn to, who, who, and we can create that essence of being able to see to today's needs by drawing off of where tradition has been. And I think this is similar to how we can function within our, our American landscape with a diversity worth celebrating, that we can draw off of our past, we can draw off tradi tr the traditions, we can confront those which may not be so suitable for today's practices, and we can help move them forward to make them more inclusive, more engaging, um, uh, more suitable uh, to bringing meaning and purpose in our lives and in our world today. God bless. Happy Thanksgiving. May you enjoy this wonderful holiday of gratitude. In the garden there 
there's a tree planted by someone who only imagined me what love what vision I marvel at the gift no fruit could be sweeter than this
Good evening and happy Thanksgiving. I'm Reverend Michelle Engels, and I'm the minister of One Heart, One Mind Center for Spiritual Living. And we come under the umbrella of the New Thought tradition, and One Heart, One Mind is honored to be a member of the Point Interfaith community. Thanksgiving is a holiday that seems perfectly designed to speak to all spiritual traditions and spiritual philosophies. To be thankful is to acknowledge the good that we've received and continue to receive in our lives. And, and our gratitude holds open a space to be filled with an even greater good, a good that's drawn from our connection to the infinite goodness and givingness of our creator. Gratitude is part of the connective tissue of the human experience now and throughout all times. You know, when we stroll back through our collective human history, we find a legacy of gratitude woven through all cultures. And here at this very moment, we're continuing that tradition by coming together in the common language of heartfelt thanksgiving and gratitude for all expressions of life. And tonight, as our theme suggests, we show our gratitude for all those who have brought us to this point in our human evolutionary journey. I'm really grateful that uh, my community, our community, is a part of the Point Interfaith uh, community. The vision of Point is to focus on our oneness, to honor and celebrate our diversity and the uniqueness of all spiritual traditions, to break with ideas of separation, and to focus on what we inherently have in common, which is that we're all expressions of one loving creative power and presence. I'm so grateful to know that you and I are expressions of the one life, the one love, and the one power of the divine. And as such, we are the ones who are charged with continuing the process of expressing this divinity in our human lives, just as those who came before us have done and have passed their wisdom and their experience onto us. We're charged with continuing to bring the awareness of the presence of the divine into the human journey. And we do this by living the principle of oneness, by dedicating ourselves to seeing through to our unity in God. We're the ones who are called to see into each other's soul and, and to honor the truth of each being, even if they don't see the same thing in us. We can't just tolerate our differences. We have to celebrate them and be grateful for the many, many ways in which God shows up. Life is a divine idea unfolding. And even though as human beings, we have to walk through many challenges and struggles, um, experiences that are just part of being human, I'm grateful to know that there's a part of each of us that can never be altered or injured, that is infinitely whole that we are each a sacred life at our center. And this is what we, we have in common now and with everyone who has come before us. I'm grateful that we're not frozen in time, that life is constantly expanding and evolving, and that we can use the wisdom of those who have come before us as a launching pad to continue the miraculous journey of humanity. Our gratitude is a promise to continue the journey and to have the courage to move into the possibilities that are yet to be. To recognize the ongoing journey is to recognize that our contributions matter and that we are the ongoing part of the expansion of good in the human experience. So in this season of thanksgiving and gratitude, I invite you to think about the people who have come before you and ask yourself, what qualities in them do I admire? And then look deep within yourself to find those qualities. I know they're there. What you admire in others has struck a chord of recognition in you. I invite you to continue the tradition of gratitude by bringing the qualities you admire actively into your daily life to take every opportunity to bring a fresh new expression of the divine into the human experience in every moment. I am so grateful. And so it is. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. 
It is wonderful to be with you for another Point Thanksgiving service. How grateful I am for this wonderful annual event that we get to come together, and I look forward, hopefully, to next year being together in person. Thanks to each of you for your efforts in helping strengthen faith in our community. I've been asked to share with you a few thoughts on this topic. How did the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints come and contribute to America? To answer that question, we can't just go back to the day it was formed in 1830, but we have to go back farther and recognize two important groups in our country, the Pilgrims and our Founding Fathers. As you know, it's been almost 400 years since that first Thanksgiving when the Pilgrims came. And as you think about the 110 people that came from the Mayflower, um, 47 died that first winter and gave their lives essentially for religious freedom. That story has been replicated amongst the early members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and how grateful we are for the faith of those pilgrims. For many of the early members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are descendants of them. The other group, as we know, is the Founding Fathers, who admit significant persecution and, frankly, risk of death through treason, establish the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights to protect our religious freedoms. How grateful I am for those two groups that really allowed us to have a country with religious freedom where the Church of Jesus Christ could be restored. For those of you who don't know, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was officially organized in Fayette, New York on April 6th of 1830 in a small log cabin in New York. From that very modest and humble beginning, the church has now grown to over, over 16.5 million members in over 160 countries, speaking over 178 languages. How grateful I am for those who went before. Now, in terms of experiences to share with you and contributions of members of the church to our lives today, time really will only allow me to share one story, even though there are dozens and dozens of them that I could share. And I chose a story that I hope has a meaning for each one of us, since we are here. We are San Diegans and Californians. And it has to do with the migration west of the early members of the church, and in particular, a group called the Mormon Battalion. For those of you who don't know, in uh, the early history of the Church of Jesus Christ, there was great persecution, including the assassination of the first president of the church, Joseph Smith. That religious persecution, similar to what the pilgrims had uh, experienced, caused the members of the church to come west. And how grateful each of us should be that they did and made that sacrifice of what essentially became the Oregon Trail and the trails to California, Washington, and Oregon. What's interesting about that group, though, is there was a group called the Mormon Battalion. The Mormon Battalion uh, is very unique in the history of the United States because it was the first and the only military group that was organized exclusively in the federal government by, through one religious group and whose designation was a religious group, namely the Mormon Battalion. That's what they were called. And 550 people took the arduous task of going from Council Bluffs, Iowa, to San Diego. That work became a huge benefit for each of us because that trail ultimately was the trail that cut and connected San Diego to the back east. Also, those early Mormon battalion members started settling in this area and developing San Bernardino, San Diego. Some of them went up north to Sutter's Mill and, of course, were with the group that discovered gold. I would invite you to enjoy going to Old Town and find the Mormon Battalion Center. It's right there. It's free. It's open for the public. And it is a great opportunity to learn in almost like a Disneyland-esque kind of experience what these early people did to contribute to our community and how grateful I am for them. And you can pan for gold, take old photo fa uh, photos. It's a great thing, and it's open and free for everybody. So please come and go and enjoy and learn more about San Diego. I want to share with you my gratitude for those who have went before and their contributions and thank each of you for your contributions in strengthening faith in this great country and community of ours. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
seasons long ago to those who are the loved ones that I have yet to know to those whose noble names I bear whose light within me burns to them in gratitude Happy Thanksgiving from Family Federation for World Peace and Unification. Gratitude to those whom came before the shoulders upon which we stand by Pastor Walter Frank Jr. We're a Judeo-Christian program, the call of Abraham. The Lord has said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. The direct descendants of Abraham have been a part of human history since ancient times in spite of slavery and infanticide of the Hebrews by the ancient Egyptians. Babylonian attempted extermination and slavery in Babylon. The utter destruction of Jerusalem and extermination and slavery of Judah by Rome in 73 AD the expulsion from Spain and the Inquisition in 1492, Soviet pogroms of the Jews, attempted extermination and Holocaust of the Jews by Nazi Germany. Nevertheless, the Jews still exist, blessed by God. The world will be blessed through you is a true statement. Nobel Prizes have been awarded to over 850 individuals, of whom at least 22% were Jews, although Jews comprise less than 0.2% of the world's population. For example, Dr. Albert Einstein, uh, Jonas Salk, who developed the polio vaccine in which all humans on Earth should be grateful. Salman Abraham Waxman was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1952 for his discovery of streptomycin, the first antibiotic effective against tuberculosis, and we should all have gratitude. Nations have come and gone, kingdoms have risen and fallen, but the Jewish people remain throughout human history. Which brings us to Jesus Christ. We teach that the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the position of restored Adam and the Holy Spirit offer spiritual resurrection to all who believe in them and receive spiritual rebirth through them and the lives of the saints are the shoulders upon which we stand. <clears throat> the spiritual children of Jesus and the saints have been a central force of human history in spite of the rejection and crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the effort to eradicate the Christian people by Emperor Nero in Rome 860 AD, 
The schisms of the early church, violent attacks against the Christian church in France during the French Revolution and the Spanish Civil War, the effort of Nazi Germany to persecute and destroy the church, despite the wholesale genocide, torture, and extermination of Christian clergy in all communist countries, beginning with Russia, Eastern Europe, China, Vietnam, North Korea, and Cuba, etc. In spite of the persecution, the body of Christ continues to grow. According to 100 Years of Nobel Prizes website, a, re a review of Nobel Prizes award between 1901 and 2000, 65% of Nobel Prize laureates have identified Christianity in its various forms as their religious preference, including 78% uh, of all Nobel Prizes in peace, 72% in chemistry, 65% in physics, 62% in medicine, which has been a blessing to all mankind. Uh, we believe that Reverend Moon was called by Jesus Christ in Korea in uh, Easter of 1936, just as Jesus called St. Paul, Dr. Martin Luther King, and others. Reverend Moon rose from the obscurity of a Stone Age Korean village born in 1920 to affect the course of human history and to inspire us in the United States of America. Despite attempts against his life by Japanese police, he survived torture and imprisonment on several occasions. Despite the communist North Koreans torturing him and sending him to communist extermination camp at Hungnam, he survived two years and eight months. Despite imprisonment and false accusations in South Korea, again, he was exonerated of all charges, persecution from Korean government and people, despite expulsion from France, Germany, Spain, Taiwan, and many other countries, despite false imprisonment in the United States, despite all that, Reverend Moon has devoted his life to the worship of God. He has established Christian churches in 185 countries, created the Middle East Peace Initiative, brought the truth of divine principle, which seeks to bless families throughout the USA and world, creating families and a movement of true love. This is a uh, picture of 60 cl Christian clergy in America, including Buddhists, Hindus, and others. Uh, another picture of an uh, interfaith marriage blessing ceremony, vows of 30,000 couples to love God and love each other. Uh, this is Madison Square Garden, where some brothers and sisters, by the way, my wife and I were standing right there, came to receive the blessing of marriage and to commit our lives to God, Christianity, United States, and true family values. We've con continued these blessing family movement throughout human history. This is my own family, clearly blessed by God. Uh, and also, by the way, we honor all other religions. God loves Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Muslims. But these are the shoulders upon which we stand. Amen, and God bless you all. Namaste. I am Mudita Tiwari from Hindu Americans of San Diego. And today, we are going to present how grateful we are for those who came here before us and whose shoulders we, were, we are standing on today. Today I'm going to talk about Swami Vivekanand who arrived in America in 1853. He had a very long journey and you can imagine at that time. So by a different channel he arrived to British Columbia and from there through train he, was, he came to Boston. And because Boston living was cheap, so he was able to live there. And when he used to travel in, the, in his picturesque dress, no less than his regal appearance attracted all the Americans. And then Swamiji met Professor Wright, and he asked him to represent Hinduism in the Parliament of Religions, since that was the only way he could be introduced to the nation at large. When he announced, however, that he had no credentials, the professor replied, to ask you, Swami, for your credentials is like asking the sun about its right to shine. He wrote about the Swami to a number of important people connected with parliament, especially to the chairman of the committee on selection of delegates. He was one of his friends and said, here is a man more learned then all our learned professors put together. Professor Wright bought Swami railroad ticket to Chicago. And that's how his journey in America was 
and took place. Um, and when he came to America in his uh, speech in the parliament, he spoke about religion and Hinduism. And that's when the real light shined about the Vedanta. He thought that is it's a manifestation of the divinity already, already in man. The central theme of Vedanta is harmony of religions. This, the spiritual harmony is to be realized by deepen, deepening our spiritual consciousness. Vedantas ask a Christian to be a true Christian, a Hindu to be a true Hindu, a Buddhist to be a true Buddhist, a Jew to be a true Jew, Jewish, and a Muslim to be a true Muslim. So the Vedanta, that's the, that's the knowledge that he brought all the way from the East to the West. Swami Vivekanand has always said, like you have to grow from inside out. None can teach you, none can make you spiritual. There is no other teacher but your own soul. So discovery of yourself is all about Vedanta. Religion is the light of Vedanta. It is the manifestation of the divinity that already a man holds in. His beautiful teaching also took us to some sayings that he has presented. We are what our thoughts have made us. So take care of our thoughts. Words are secondly, secondary. Thoughts live, they travel far. A nation is advanced in proportion or to education and intelligence spread among the masses. His amazing teaching is still respected uh, among Bhartiya and around the globe. All these references that I spoke today was from the ramakrishna.org Vivekananda America.html and the reference has been given here. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share the journey of our first spiritual guru of Hinduism, Swami Vivekananda. Thank you. Hi, my name is Greg Angel with Interfaith Community Services. I have the honor of serving as our CEO here at Interfaith. And when we think about the people who came before us, well, we don't have to look very far. These are our founders, 14 diverse faith communities that more than 40 years ago came together with the insight and the wisdom that all of us together, with a diversity of experiences, a diversity of faith traditions, and a diversity of perspectives that all of us together are much more effective than any one of us can be alone. You demonstrated that remarkably this last year amidst a year of so many challenges. In the last year through Interfaith Community Services, you and more than 150 uh, congregations have helped more than 21,000 men, women, and children. You've helped with food, shelter, housing, addiction treatment services, job training, counseling, and so much more. I'm here at our Escondido headquarters. Your services that you provided worked throughout all of uh, North San Diego County, including Poway, Rancho Bernardo, um, and, and, and other, other communities. And as I think about the people who came before us, I think most of all about the people who walked through these doors who have walked through this service center, who have walked through all of the housing locations that you've created through Interfaith over the years. On the other side of this wall is the only homeless shelter in North San Diego County serving all genders. It's our Haven House shelter. Many of you have come and served uh, meals for our Haven House residents. One of our Haven House shelter residents recently uh, overcame not just homelessness, but also addiction. Um, and, um, and, and nearly a generation of, of instability. And I wanted to share her words with you tonight. When we asked what her life was like prior to connecting with the services you offer, she said, my life was chaotic, absolutely unmanageable. I was homeless for 15 years and it was a struggle to get my basic needs met. It was exhausting and scary. 
I finally realized that I couldn't go on any more out there like that. I was willing to do whatever it took to change the way I had been living. Thank God for you, you created Interfaith Community Services, and she was able to come here and get shelter and get addiction treatment, and this last summer, she moved into a place of, of her very own. I wanted to share, in closing tonight, uh, her words on how things are different today. She said, my, li my life is different now. It's drastically different. I actually have a life. I get to constantly work on myself because Interfaith has helped teach me how to do that. Um, she wanted to share her words, which is why I wanted to share them with you tonight, because she says, I really hope this story will help someone and someone can relate to my story. Um, I used to wonder, how does someone feel done? When I felt exhausted enough, I was willing to try to get help. I became willing to change. And that's how I found Interfaith. Um, I wanted to share her message. Her name is Tiffany. I wanted to share her experience and her strength with all of you tonight, because that is who you're helping. That is who this community comes together to support when people seek change and seek improvement and seek a better way forward. You are there for them. The people who came before us have created services that are there for them. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you to everyone who is a part of what we do. And thank you for your support of Interfaith Community Services. Thank you to Point for bringing us all together in this most special of ways every year. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Carolyn and I'm part of the Poway Interfaith team, known as Point and the Baha'i Faith. Thanksgiving has traditionally been celebrated with family and friends. However, this past year that hasn't happened due to COVID-19. Most of us have been unable to get together with our loved ones. The beauty of it though is that we discovered Zoom and now we can get together with people through Zoom. So I'm glad that Point's service this year will be on Zoom and we will get the chance to tell people everywhere that we love them and we are united despite it being through technology right now. And that uh, we see more and more people coming together and realizing we are one, which is true. It's all about oneness. So have a wonderful holiday and a wonderful Thanksgiving. And thank you, Point, for doing this once again. Take care. In the Baha'i writings, thankfulness is gratitude for all the bounties of life. Expressing thanks connects us and brings us joy. Each day we find a moment to count our blessings, reflecting on the treasures in our lives, lifts our spirits, thankfulness soothes our sadness and restores our hopes. It gives us perspective. As we practice thankfulness, we attract more and more blessings because 
Thanksgiving is conducive to bounty. Thankfulness is a path to contentment. We must show thankfulness through our actions and deeds. This will gladden the hearts and souls and bring unity of thought and action into our communities. We are so blessed to have this. Faces radiant through the 